Welcome to Calvary Conversations and Happy New Year. My name is Mariah and today we are going to be talking about New Year's resolutions. So the definition of a New Year's resolution is a promise to do something differently in the new year. And like we all know, a lot of people make New Year's resolutions and break them by the time it's February. Why? Because we cannot do things in our own strength and make promises because a lot of times we're doing our own strength it's going to fail because we can do nothing without God. So we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So that's why today we're going to be talking about a godly way of looking at New Year's resolutions and goals and things like that and what Christians should do with this. So um, I first want to encourage you guys. My dad did an amazing message this Sunday, and it was called The Best New Year's Resolution. It was on Psalms 85 one through seven. So that will be in the description below. So please make sure to go check that out. It was talking about prayer and how important it is to prayer. And that is the best thing we can do. So please make sure to check that out. But I just want to give you guys some tips. You don't have to do what I say at all. But I was able to talk to my dad yesterday and my mom, and they both were able to give me some tips Um, and verses and things like that. So that's what I will be sharing with you guys today. This will be a shorter episode, not episode, (laughs) episode. So let's go. All right. So the first one is looking back at the things of 2021. So that kind of sounds bad because we know we're not supposed to look behind, but we're supposed to look forward and to press on to the high calling that God has called us to. But it also is important to sometimes to learn from history, right? So that we don't repeat it. So I encourage you guys to spend some time with the Lord and ask him to speak to you, ask him to reveal some things to you that um, maybe he was trying to speak to you last year and you weren't listening. You're just so busy and distracted um, with the things of this life. So The first thing I encourage you to do is spend time with God and say, Lord, what are some things you want to teach me that you were trying to teach me last year and I wasn't listening to you? And for me, I'll just tell you guys what I learned from last year is I learned how selfish I am. And a joke that my family, um, we always say is because when I was going to Christmas vacation, like years back, probably I was in high school and I had got a new blanket. And Morgan asked if he could bring the blanket to the trip. And I said, Morgan, you can't bring that blanket Uh, I just got it. And he said, Mariah, you're being so selfish. And then I said, I'm not selfish. I just care about myself. And they all started laughing because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I care about myself, which means I, and then usually if I care about myself so much, I'm not really caring about others. And even if I did say, I was trying to say stuff, I'm not selfish. I just care about my stuff, but even that's wrong. So I just been realizing still, I'm almost 25. I realize how selfish I am and how it is better to give than to receive. And so many times I just want people to bless me and refresh me, but I'm not really blessing others. Um, I can kind of pretend I am, but I know my heart is desperately wicked and deceitful. So just also this, um, I just love the verse, first Corinthians 11, three, it says, judge yourself rightly. So you won't be judged. So first thing is look back and ask the Lord to speak to you those things that um, maybe you, that if there were sins of commission, sins that you're committing that he wants to get rid of or sins of omission, things he wanted you to do, but you were just too busy doing your own thing. You didn't do it. So that's the first thing. Second thing is to love discipline. I know that's a hard one, but that's something, another thing I learned from last year is I do not like discipline. And it says a fool, they hate correction and discipline. And I don't want to be a fool or selfish. So I encourage you guys to love discipline, to know that and it talks about that in Hebrews 12, 5 through 11, that the Lord disciplines those he loves. So know that when you're being disciplined, the Lord loves you. He wants you to learn from your mistakes and the things and not to make excuses, but to see, is this in your word? Is Are you trying to speak to me to change this because this is what you're you're speaking to me and then obey that and obey that cheerfully, not just begrudgingly. There's a difference between obedience and submission. I've been learning when I was doing um, the first Peter study with the women that when you can obey is when you're like, okay, I'll, I'll do it because I have to, but submission, a beautiful thing that all women need to learn, especially is you're doing it cheerfully because you do trust that the Lord is going to take care of you. So submission is a beautiful thing and obedience to obey is better than sacrifice. So make sure you're submitting to the will of God um, and loving discipline. 
Okay, the third one is Proverbs 15, 22 says, um, out of the multitude of counselors, there's much wisdom. And basically, with your counselors, um, you will succeed. So to make sure that you get a good um, group of people, a community of people, um, discipleship. Again, Hebrews eleven twenty five. we always talk about to not forsake the fellowship of believers, which is church, ecclesia, coming outside of your house as some are in the habit of doing, especially as the day of the Lord approaches. So make sure you get into a good community. Make sure you're going to church. And we saw that last year. I was looking up statistics. When people were starting their New Year's resolutions, Um, after COVID, after 2020, it wasn't the same New Year's resolutions as like health and fitness and, you know, people getting gym memberships and then it's February and then everyone, like no one's at the gym anymore. But it's because we we can't do it in our own strength. But the issue is um, that we realized was because during COVID, people realized how it's not all about just just how you look. It's truly like things like, community family they a lot of people couldn't go to church so making commitments of like going to church or some people I guess one of the big things was taking vacations or budgeting finances to be prepared for if something like that happens so I just want to encourage you even those things even though they seem good that's not about vanity how you look but those things can even fail if you're not doing them the way that God says and you're not committing your ways to the Lord and going to church is so important because like my dad always says you can get weird when you're by yourself if you don't have iron sharpens iron and that banging together where it's we're um, encouraging one another to press on to the Lord and spend time with him instead of just being selfish and just doing vacations and things that we feel like is best not saying those things are wrong but we shouldn't be living for those things and so discipleship is important on um, proverbs 27 6 says faithful are the wounds of a friend but deceitful are the kisses of an enemy so i encourage you guys to get discipleship if you don't know what that is that's just um someone like you know how jesus had his disciples he showed them by the way he was living and he was able to lead them to the scriptures and explain things to him to to his disciples so i just encourage you guys to maybe if there's someone you look up to um, someone, they don't even have to be older than you, but maybe more mature in Christ. And there's someone who doesn't just go by their feelings, but by the word of God. And they'll give you sound, um, counsel that's from scripture, from the Bible. And also someone who's really living it out. They're not just saying things. There's a lot of people who talk a good talk, but they're not walking the walk. So those are the people to find who could disciple you. And then once you found that person, ask them, say, Hey, would you be willing to disciple me? Maybe that's just meeting once a week and going over some verses or a book in the Bible or just any questions that you have that they answer them. So I encourage you guys to do that, to get discipleship, to go to church, um, to find the second Timothy two twenty two. I love that verse. It says, um, to flee from anything that stimulates youthful lust and says, um, enjoy, instead pursue righteousness, love, peace, and enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord of pure heart. So maybe that's going to a Bible study. Maybe that's you discipling someone else or starting a Bible study. But I just encourage you guys to get into a good community, not people who are just going to tickle your ears and flatter you, but are going to tell you the truth in love, even if that means correction and discipline. So to love discipline, to want to be part of a community of godly believers. And if you don't have a church, find a church that is going through the Bible verse by verse, not sugarcoating it, and yeah, speaking the truth in love. And if you don't have a church, you can also visit our church, Calvary Valley. Um, another thing is to serve. So I love this. Um, it's in Matthew 20, 27 through 28. It says, whoever wishes to be first among you shall be a slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, to give his life as a ransom for many. So that's what we should be doing, not just coming to be, bless me, um, love me, fill me. Like a lot of people, that's why they don't like churches because they feel like, oh, people didn't um, say hi to me or I don't have the amenities I want. It's because why? They want to be blessed. But I encourage you, like my dad always says, think of how amazing church would be is if you came to be a blessing, to pray for someone else, to give them a word of wisdom or knowledge or just a prophetic word, just something to bless others. And prophecy is to edify, exhort, and to comfort. And I just encourage you guys, don't go based off your feelings when you give, like if you're praying to give a prophetic word, but it's based always backed up with scripture. That's a side note, but 
serving. Proverbs eleven twenty five says, those who refresh or bless others, they themselves will be refreshed or blessed. So when you give, you will be blessed. And especially if you give cheerfully, another thing I encourage you guys to do in this new year, if you haven't, is to give to the Lord your tithe, which tithe means 10%, 10% of your gross or your first um, fruit or your income to give that to the Lord. And praise God, he even lets us have 90%, which is such a, such a blessing. But to be a giver, a cheerful giver, like the Bible talks about. And in Malachi, it says that's the time where he says to test him, to try him, to to give and see if he won't bless you and rebuke the devourer. And so giving is another thing to implement in your life is important, not just your money, but your time. So to serve, to maybe at the church, if you don't want to, to just be selfish and just come to be blessed maybe ask if you can help clean or ask you can talk to me if you want to maybe um also if you want to be part of the kids ministry the children's ministry you can talk to vel um you can also be part of the coffee bar talk to andrea um kevin with the media sound words cameras we always need especially those children's ministry people so please um come to us and ask us even if you don't feel equipped or able to it's really cool because when you start blessing others and you know even with the kids a lot of people like sometimes the kids know more than me but it's good because then it spurs you to want to be in the word to study what the bible is saying so that you can pour into the children and the next generations so um, another thing with discipleship is I encourage you, I know that in the New Year's, everyone's trying to be fit and trying to look good and go to the gym, but I encourage you to be fat, which you're like, what, what does that mean? Um, my dad always says it to be faithful, to be available, but the most important, which is really hard to find is to be teachable. And so whatever the Lord is trying to speak to you and it's in the word of God to obey it, to submit to it cheerfully. So he talks about giving. He talks about serving um, Jesus in John 13 washed his disciples feet. So he was serving. That was like a servant's job, one of the lowliest servants job. And yet Jesus did that. So we need to be like Christ and um, we need to follow his ways. So. I think it can be easy to see all these things and to be overwhelmed, but I don't want it to overwhelm you because a lot of times we try to take out all the bad things, but then we don't fill it with the good things or wondering why I'm not doing these bad things that I shouldn't do anymore. But I, but then a new thing comes up. Why? It's because Matthew 6, um, 33 says, seek first the kingdom and, all, and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So instead of just trying to push things away, Make sure you're implementing not just good things like quote unquote New Year's resolutions that you think of, but things that are in the scripture, in the Bible, in God's holy word. Um, and so find those verses, the things that he speaks to you and obey them, submit to them. I know I keep saying it and repeating myself, but he tells us that when you do that, when you fear the Lord, there's many blessings for those who fear God, which is wanting to obey his commandments and not wanting to do anything to break his heart. So I know, like I said, it can be overwhelming, but don't get overwhelmed. It's just like my dad was saying, listen to his message. He was talking how important prayer is, speaking to the Lord. He is your father. He is your counselor. He should be your best friend and he is your savior and also your Lord. So you can't just say, oh, I'll do this, but you know, I don't know if I can because I have this to do or that. If he's truly your Lord, you will obey his commandments if you love him and are submitted to his ways. So another thing I encourage you guys to do um, is to maybe get like a year devotional. So you guys can go to U version and get a year. Um, it's a one year Bible. You can read that just because so many times I get overwhelmed. I'm like, I don't know what to read. I get um, just kind of overwhelmed with there's so much I could be reading, but a one year Bible really helps you. Not that you have to even read it um, religiously because that's not right, but to just read it when you can and there's some form of, you know, root, not routine, but to know what to read. So that's important. So you can, if you've never read the whole Bible, I encourage you to do that. Also, um, there's a, a Bible program that I'm doing. It's by Dr. Horner. You guys can find that. I'll put that in the description below. And another thing is I encourage you to get to a good godly year devotional. Um, I know a lot of people read like, you know, Jesus Calling by Sarah Young, but she has a lot of like new age things in it or things that are, it's more what she thinks that God would say and feelings instead of just scripture. But I encourage you guys to get 
Oswald Chambers book. It is the um, my utmost for his highest. And I love January 2nd. I just started reading it. But um, January 2nd, it says everything we're talking about says, do not worry about your life nor your body. It talks about that in Luke 12, 22. It says, in other words, do not worry about the things that concerned you before you did, quote unquote, go out. And then it says, um, have you been asking God what he is going to do? He will never tell you. God does not tell you what he's going to do. He reveals to you who he is. So I love that because so many times we just want, God, give me an answer. What's going to happen in 2022? But he's not going to just tell you what's going to happen always. I mean, he might give you something where he tells you what's going to, warns you or tells you what's going to happen. But usually he tells you what he's going to do, like who he is what he's going to do but who he is and then you can have peace um another verse you guys all know in matthew 6 25 through 34 talks about to not worry about tomorrow for today has enough enough troubles of its own so i encourage you to read matthew 6 25 and 34 and so people always at my mom asked this question she was saying what if the people are asking are goals bad or new year's resolutions because you're like freaking out or stressing about the future I don't think goals are bad if they are backed up with scripture. I don't think it's bad to um, have discipline in your life. It talks about that too in 1 Timothy 4, 8. Bodily discipline is of some value. It has some value. It is good. But godly or spiritual discipline is for this life here on this earth and the life to come, which is eternity in heaven. So it's not saying goals and things are bad, but it's more important to spend time with the Lord because that's going to last for eternity. How you love God and then how we love others. And that's those are the commandments summed up. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. So it's just if you have goals that are biblical, then yes. If they're worldly and things you just made up, then yeah, those are wrong. And to just take it day by day because like it says in Matthew 6, don't worry about tomorrow. Today has enough troubles of its own. And he cares about you. He cares about the lilies. He cares about the sparrows. How much more is your heavenly father? Um, does he care about you? So seek him first, which might mean, you know, seeking him before you start your day, reading the one year Bible, reading a Bible plan or a daily devotional, um, putting worship music on and maybe just crying out to him, talking to him just for start with five minutes and just build on that. And just don't overwhelm yourself, but know it's important to seek him in the beginning of the day and then he'll take care of the rest and just you can talk to him throughout the day to pray without ceasing. Um, also, I just want to encourage you guys with these verses. Uh, it's Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen. When you seek me, you will find me. When you search for me with all your heart. So that isn't just a passive searching. That is an active searching. Um, also, like Leonard Ravenhill says, God doesn't answer prayer. He answers desperate prayers. So to pray with him with desperation, knowing that only he, he, the Lord, can answer those things, not any person or any program or thing. Only the Lord can take care of you. Um, another verse is James 4, 8, which I love this verse. I love all of James. Um, I just read that. But James 4, 8 says, Come close to God and God will come close to you, or draw near to him, and he will draw near to you. It says, wash your hands, you, you sinners, Purif purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. And so that's our main thing, is we don't want to be divided with, oh, I kind of want to live for self, but I want to live for the, for the Lord too. No, we need to be on fire, radical disciples. And that's our prayer for the new year for all of you guys, is that we want to go all out for the Lord. Pedal, pedal to, or I always <laughs> um pedal to the metal or full throttle just all out on fire not lukewarm and i encourage you guys to you know all the things we talked about to look at in scripture yourself don't listen to me because i can lead you astray but listen to the lord seek him first and um i know that was a lot but again um i also have some other just advice or tips. You don't have to take this, but to get a journal and to write, I wrote some things down from last year and it's cool to look back. I also wrote down some quotes from Charles Spurgeon, Corey Ten Boon, George Mueller, um, and then A.W. Tozer, Leonard Ravenhill, Martin Lloyd-Jones. Um, other people are um, 
who was it? Some missionaries too, Amy Carmichael. I encourage you guys to look at great men and women of old. They were men and women of prayer. They were men and women who were seeking first the kingdom of God and living righteously. And they were not selfish people. They served. So I encourage you guys to read stories about that instead of going even on YouTube. And I know you're watching this video on YouTube right now or on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever. But after this, spend time with the Lord. Seek him. And um, another thing is to read good Christian books. Our um, prayer team um, that we have prayer counselors after church. We're going through this book, Power Healing by John Wimber, which is so powerful. Um, I encourage you guys to get this and read this. You can read it alongside um, with us. And yeah, I know that was a lot, but thank you guys so much for listening. Um, and just be encouraged that this year that we all are sinners. We're all imperfect people, but we always should be falling forward at the feet of Jesus, that we should each day be sanctified, set apart, and less of the flesh and just being more filled with the spirit of God. And um, one last verse, I just want to read it. It's Hebrews 11, 8. It says, by faith, when called to go to a place he could later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. So even if you don't know the answer or what's going to happen or where you're going, know that God is faithful and that's where we put our faith is in is in God. And again, thank you so much for your prayers for my mom. Um, if you guys don't know, she has stage four metastasized breast cancer. She's in a lot of pain right now. So just prayers for my mama. I'm so thankful I was able to go through all this with her. And she gave me a lot of verses and good wisdom. Um, but thank you for your prayers. We're going to have more time where we fast and cry out because we know that God can heal her. He is the healer. He is Jehovah Rapha. And we're trusting that. We're praying for that. So I encourage you guys to pray with us. Um, but I love that, like we're learning in Daniel on Wednesday nights, that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or Hananiah, Mishael, and I think it was, wait, Hananiah, I don't know. I just butchered it. But anyway, those were their actual names. But I, they said that I know God can deliver us and get us out of the fire furnace. But even if he doesn't, we will still praise him. And that's what we feel with our mom is even if he doesn't, we'll still praise him. But we do have faith that he can heal her even the last second. So thank you for your prayers. And I love you guys so much. I can't wait for 2022. 2021 went by really fast. But I'm excited for this year because we are going to be walking in God's will, not our will by the grace and strength of God. And um, I just also want to just pray that we will be a church that is set apart and a church that is just striving for the Lord and not the things of this world. Um, so thank you so much for watching us. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you would like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also follow us to check out our behind the scenes on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. And thank you so much to our sponsor, Mission Heating and Cooling. It's kind of getting colder out there, even though it's Tucson. So if you need any heating or AC, it's sometimes hot during the day, go check them out in the description below. And the podcast might look a little differently this year, which I'm excited about. We're going to um, do interviews, and then I'm also going to do a lot of shorter clips. So it's going to be great. We have a new team where, well, not a new team. We still have Kevin and Trinity, but some other people who will be helping me out will also be doing um, more merch. So t-shirts, hats, and things like that, stickers. So stay tuned for that. I love you guys so much and God bless.